Hey y'all, welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. Today is Thanksgiving and I might be getting myself a Thanksgiving surprise. Chicken Hawk, her due date is today. I don't know what I was thinking when I bred her that I thought it would be a good idea to have a due date on Thanksgiving, but here we are on Thanksgiving and today is her due date. Her ligaments are barely there. They were there last night. She started to drop last night. She's dropped Today, she's not holding her tail any differently. She's a lot quieter this morning. She's not been quiet. While we've uh, been keeping her in lockdown, she's beginning out during the day to move because it's important for does to keep moving, moving on up to their uh, their due date to help keep the baby's position correctly. And since Miss, uh, Miss Chicken Hawk is a first timer, it's important to try to keep all of the dice as weighted as we can in our favor. <laughs> so it's it's morning chores, everybody's in here. We're still keeping Rex and Dexter separated from them at night, but they've been getting the entire field to themselves at night and they've been doing a really great job. They're actually doing um, a good portion of their job during the day with supervision. Every half hour I come out and check, make sure they're not doing anything crazy. And I'm gonna tell you what guys, these dogs have been the most incredible thing to watch um, their instincts kind of take over. Now, if they want to go say hi to June, and June doesn't like them very much, not yet anyway. She tolerates them, but we do keep our farm dogs, our indoor dogs separate from our, our um, working dogs, but they're doing a really great job. Now, while their instincts take over, and it's super awesome to watch that, they do require training. So there have been moments where I've had to correct them because see, he's asking to be to be petted. I don't usually touch them unless they sit. So they're both up here right now wanting their, their morning cuddles. Cause we always cuddle in the morning, don't we? We always cuddle in the mornings. We always cuddle in the mornings. So we're just out here getting everything ready. I'm getting ready to drop some hay for my girls. The chicken hawk is due today. And these last couple of days, it's been one of those where I can kind of look at her and say, yeah, it's probably not gonna be the day. I'll let you out. And while we're still going to get to 51 degrees today, I'm not going to let her out just because these guys are going to be out on the field all day today and they've not been around anybody that's kidding yet. So they're not kidding safe because they're only six. And I know, is this not insane? Look how big he is. Six months old. That's it. These guys are huge. So I'm going to keep her in lockdown today with a heat lamp, some nice um, warm bedding while these guys are out doing their job. Today, they're asking to go in for their breakfast. You guys wanna go in for your breakfast? You guys wanna go in for breakfast? I can do breakfast. All right, boys, let's go. Go get your breakfast, go on Rex. Go get your breakfast. They know where to go. They wait there patiently while I get their, while I get their morning breakfast. See, Rex is saying, please, mom, please. It looks so good. I'll give him some. I feed them separately because they don't eat well together. It's one of the few times that they squabble is over food. Normal. You guys can tell. They're doing really, really good. And this pen I've kind of set up is their, their downtime pen. So they know when they go in here that it's time for them to take a break. They get fed here in the mornings. I leave them in here for a couple hours just to kind of let them come down, rest, because they're, they're good little guardians already and they really try to keep a good eye on their charges. And lots of livestock guardians will sleep almost all day. And the guys, these guys definitely do, but I do, because they're puppies, I do try to give them a space where they can go to rest by themselves. But mostly throughout the day, I'll give them about an hour or so in here. And then the rest of the day, they're out on the field and they're sleeping and just chilling out with their goats. And they're doing a really fabulous job. They don't require too many corrections at this point. The only thing I do have to correct them on often is the chickens. They're not chicken safe yet, but they'll be goat safe well before they'll be chicken safe. And uh, 
they get their exposure to it and they have a wonderful recall, which is so important. I think that was the first thing that we worked on was recall with these guys. So that if they were doing something that I didn't want them to do and I needed them to stop, that they would listen and they would obey. So they're doing a really great job. I'm going to finish the rest of my chores and hopefully the next time I come back to you guys, we'll be in a little bit of labor or I'll be coming home from Thanksgiving dinner at the in-laws to say we have baby goats and I missed all of it. I hope it's the former and not the latter. I hope we get to, to watch Chicken Hawk progress in her first ever kidding. We just got back from Thanksgiving dinner with my in-laws. I'm getting ready to go check on Chicken Hawk. Get her to do them. the evening chores. You were with me for the morning chores. But we're gonna go in here and see how she's doing. See what we can maybe expect. Oh, well, we're kind of in the position not moving a lot, are we, huh? Is it gonna be today, lovey? Poor little girl. Nothing. She's kind of assumed the position here with a light kickstand. So like I'm watching her and she's not contracting or anything. She's not and usually you can tell when they contract too, their whole body tenses and their tail will flip up because they're just, they're flexing a lot. She's more in this nesting type phase. And because this is her first time, like I, I guys, I literally have no idea what her signs are. Usually I keep really good notes on my does when they're kidding so that I know all the different symptoms that that specific doe shows because every doe is a little bit different when they're laboring. But because she's new, I have no references, <laughs> I have no notes. Um, so I'm just really watching her very closely and making mental notes before I go in and make physical notes on her behavior leading up to kidding because a lot of times, however they act one year, they're probably gonna act that way the next year. It's a lot like human women. When they go into labor, they knew like, oh, I kind of felt this way and I feel it again for their second one. So they know they're probably getting really close to having their babies and goats are no different. But because it's her first time, we have, we have nothing to reference. So I'm just going to go about my uh, evening chores. I'm going to get some grain together for the girls, get down and feed the bucks, take some hay down, and then hopefully we will have babies soon. <laughs> Pray for a uh, less than eventful delivery that it's smooth. I always worry with my first fresheners. They seem like if there's any type of struggle, they go into shock and then it really is up to them to get through it. And then if not, then I get to be mom until they figure it out, if they figure it out. So prayers, guys, fingers crossed, all the good things. Well, guys, I'm guessing you can already tell <laughs> by the noise in the background, chicken hot kitted. And she did it all within the span of when we left to coming back. She spit two out in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> that is pretty great for a first timer and she's being a good mom. She loves her little babies, they're so cute. And she gave me two does. She gave me a, a doe, even though I know I don't go for color or blue eyes around here, but she gave, I finally got a gold blue eyed doe. And it's out of Lunar Howl. And I'm super excited about that. So we've got two little babies, two little girls. <laughs> And they're both being so good. She's being such a good mommy, guys. She's being such a good mommy. Oh, yes, you are. They're Thanksgiving babies. So I'm thankful that they're here, that she did it by herself, and they seem pretty healthy. They're both already figured out. They're doing so good. And Chicken Hawk loves them.
Okay, so I know they're doing good. They're up, they're moving. She's drying them, she's attentive. She's doing all the things that a goat mom is supposed to be doing and they are already latched on. I know the darker one, which seems that's probably the one that was born first because she was the least goopy when I came in, and has already latched on and gotten herself a really good drink. Getting that mama's colostrum within the first few hours, if you can, is really, really important for, um, number one, nursing helps to stimulate the dough to pass her afterbirth. So for her placenta to, to clean, for her to go through a cleaning process, which means losing her afterbirth, that nursing helps to stimulate her uterus to keep contracting to get rid of those things. And um, colostrum is great for babies. It, the quicker that they are up and moving, they get that colostrum in, mom's cleaning them, they'll start to regulate their own body heat and they'll keep that energy level up and they're both super aware, they're both with it. So you can tell, even though I only walked away for, no joke guys, like 10, maybe 12 minutes, she spit both of them out by herself. She was attentive. She's not going through that first timer shock. She's doing all the things you wanna see a dairy goat do, any livestock do, once they're going through their first um, birthing experience, is they're attentive to their babies. It was a quick, um, seamless birth, everybody's healthy and everybody's going in the right direction. Seeing a lot of the, the, the signs that I want to see. So with that, I'm going to let her have her bonding time, clean them off, let the babies do what they're going to do. And I'm just really, really thankful. That is the end of our kidding season for 2023. I am a little sad to admit that, but trust me, we've bred over 15, 16 does for spring of 2024 I think our first ones are in February so we don't really get too long of a break before we're back out here so that means we move on to other farm shenanigans outside of the goating world like sonograms that you guys will be seeing here really really soon because our first does that we've bred are past that 30 day mark I think all of them except for six are past 30 days so I will um, be ultrasounding them making sure you're confirming the pregnancy and seeing how many little babies we can possibly see in there. So exciting things on the farm, guys. Those are just the cutest. Tequila and Chikorita. And pretty mama chicken hawk, huh? Hi, babies. Yeah.